हेलो एवरी वन एज यू नो इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर आई हैव डिस्कस दैट हाउ वी कैन ट्रांसफॉर्म थ्री डायमेंशनल यूक्लिडियन मिट्रिक टेंसर फ्रॉम कार्टिशियन टू स्फेरिकल पोलर कोआर्डिनेट्स एंड इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल सी दैट हाउ वी कैन फाइंड इट्स इन वर्स नो स्टूडेंट्स यू नो दैट द मिट्रिक टेंसर इज गिवन बाय जी मू न्यू एंड इट्स इन वर्स इज गिवन इन अ कंट्रावेरियंट फॉर्म दैट इज गिवन बाय दिस वन एंड इफ वी मल्टीप्लाई दैम विद ईच अदर लाइक यू नो दैट इफ वी मल्टीप्लाई आ मेट्रिक्स you can um, actually it is not a matrix okay but uh, for just for the sake of understanding if we multiply a matrix with its inverse then we get an identity matrix in a similar way if we multiply the inverse of a metric tensor then we will get delta mu nu okay this is actually the kronecker delta now students we want to convert from cartesian to spherical polar so the old variables are x y and z and the new variables are r theta and phi Now, students, by using the transformation law of tensor in a contravariant form, because we want to find the inverse, so I have expressed here g prime mu nu. Now here mu and nu are uh, in superscript, so um, uh, these values like partial x prime mu and partial x prime nu will be in the numerator. Now this is the transformation formula. Now if we want to find g one one prime. you know that um, these are the values means g11 g12 g13 and we want to find the variable uh, values in a new variables that are r theta and phi so i have mentioned here i have taken the value mu is equal to 1 and nu is equal to 1 so we will get over here partial x prime 1 is divided by partial x alpha in the similar way partial x prime 1 partial x beta and g alpha beta in a similar manner now students um here alpha and beta are the dummy variables or dummy indices now uh, the alpha and beta variation will be from 1 2 and 3 because we have a three dimensional space okay now here i have just used the value of alpha beta means alpha beta is equal to 1 alpha beta is equal to 2 and alpha beta is equal to 3 but i haven't taken the value alpha is equal to 1 beta is equal to 2 alpha is equal to 2 beta is equal to 1 means i am saying that uh, i have i haven't used the value of g12 g21 g13 g31 and uh, g32 and g23 because you know from here like from this tensor that these values are equal to 0 so if we write the values then they will be they will become zero at the end okay now if i use here the values of g11 is equal to 1 and you know that x1 prime that is equal to r so i have written here partial r and in a similar way x1 is equal to x so i have written here x and the, these terms appear twice so i have mentioned here that it is the square now you know that the transformation equations are x is equal to r sin theta cos phi y is equal to r sin theta sin phi and z is equal to r cos of theta now students if we want to find the values of r theta and phi then you know we get these values okay now our target here is to find partial r by partial x because previously i have mentioned here that we need the value of partial derivative of r with respect to x r with respect to y and r with respect to z um, because we want to find the partial derivative of r so i have just transformed these equations in terms of r theta and phi so we can easily compute the partial derivatives okay now their partial derivatives are given by this one and if i use the values of these three partial derivatives over here in the value of g11 prime that i then i will get this value and it will become equal to 1 in a similar way g22 prime g22 prime means mu nu that is equal to 2 and alpha beta as it is and now these are dummy variables so i i will write in a sum over form now here i am not using the value 1 2 2 1 or 3 1 1 3 because uh, due to this metric tensor two dimensional three sorry three dimensional metric tensor all of these values becomes equal to 0 so if you write then they will become zero at the end okay it's up to you if you want to write them then you can write uh, just uh, just for understanding okay now here g11 is equal to 1 and g22 is equal to 1 and g33 is equal to 1 okay and x uh, prime 2 is equal to theta so we get this value 
now partial theta by partial x as you know previously i have write the value of theta in this way like tan inverse square root of uh, x square plus y square is divided by z so um, if we take partial derivative then we will get this term and then uh, after substituting and simplifying we get the value of 1 over r square in a similar way g prime 3 3 um if we simplify it then we will get this value 1 by r square sin square of theta now students here g i j is equal to 0 for i is not equal to j i'm not doing all the calculations you can check it by yourself that uh, if you find the value of uh, g prime 1 3 then that is equal to 0 and due to symmetry g 3 1 prime is equal to 0 <coughs> in a similar way g 1 2 prime that is equal to 0 and due to symmetry g 1 2 prime is equal to 0 and in a similar way g 2 3 prime is equal to mean the off diagonal values are equal to 0 okay and we will get this result now you can easily see that previously what we get the values are 1 r square r square sin square theta now this is a important point that need to be made here that uh, if we have a diagonal metric tensor then its inverse is actually the inverse of the diagonal entries because all the other entries are equal to 0 i am saying that uh, you know g mu nu prime that is equal to 1 0 0 Uh, 0 r square 0 0 0, 0 r square uh, sin square of theta okay now if we want to take its inverse then you know it is a diagonal because all the off diagonal entries are zero so uh, if you want to find its inverse then just write the inverse of the diagonal entries okay now this is all about this lecture i hope you understand it thank you so much